Well, hello everybody, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do some uh, quick review of some basic biochemistry. This is going to be uh, an introduction to the uh, biotransformation and molecular mechanisms of uh, toxicity course I'll be taking here pretty, pretty soon. Okay, so what am I going to talk about today? Well, today I'm going to talk about Michaelis Mitten Kinetics. I actually have a couple of videos that I've already done on um, the Michaelis Mitten plot and then converting that over to a Lineberg Weaver plot. And that'll, these videos will be kind of be a redux of that with um, a little more emphasis on understanding uh, conceptually and a little bit of math, uh, a little bit of um, quantitatively as well, but just kind of understanding the the mechanism and some of the assumptions that go into that mechanism. And that, you know, it's not a, it is not a, an exact representation of reality. Um, it is a, is an approximation, and it is an approximation that at least gives us some good insight into what's going on with enzymes and how they work. Okay, so here's the basic uh, gist of it. Um, and, and I should I should preface by saying I'm not a biochemistry major. I'm not even taking a biochemistry course. And I'm not studying for the MCAT. So um, I can, if I choose to, choose to look, look over stuff. Okay, just to kind of not even really concern myself with it if I, if, if I don't have to. And just kind of get to the point on some of these concepts, which is what I plan to do here. Okay, so let's talk about the basic mechanism. So the basic mechanism is as follows. Okay, you have some concentration of it. You have a little test tube in a lab. You mix some enzyme in there, okay? You have some concentration of enzymes, okay? And uh, you, so you have your tube, you have enzymes, and then you add some something that's going to um, react with the enzyme, some we call a substrate, okay? And um, what's going to happen is the enzymes are going to combine with the substrates, or the substrates will combine with the enzyme, okay? And you'll form an enzyme-substrate complex, okay? The enzyme will hold the substrate in place, and some cool chemical magic will happen to the substrate. And then uh, once that chemical magic happens, the enzyme will release the substrate, uh, which will be product, okay? So the substrate is turned into product. Okay, so you have substrate here, it binds with the enzyme, okay, chemical reaction happens and it's turned into a product, okay, the enzyme releases the product and then the enzyme goes back and it combines with another substrate to form another enzyme substrate product uh, complex and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a cycle, all right. So what you have here is just basically just a chemical reaction, really, in, in a sense. And so um, you have uh, enzyme plus substrate. And then uh, this K1 here is just some sort of, just some constant, okay? Some constant describes um, the movement, uh, basically enzyme substrate becoming enzyme substrate complex, okay? So you have the forward direction. And, you know, whatever constant, you, you know, you just have to measure that. Okay, you just have to measure it in the lab and just find out what it is and you plug it in there. And then you have uh, this K minus 1 here, which is just another coefficient or constant that describes how the enzyme substrate complex can degrade um, back into enzyme and substrate. Okay, so there, there's, there's some speed or some speed by which it, it moves in this direction, and then there's some speed by which it moves in that direction. And that's all these lines are here. Okay, so K1. K minus 1. And then here we make kind of an assumption that once you actually have the enzyme substrate complex formed and that chemical magic happens, you have a basically an irreversible chemical reaction and the substrate becomes a product. Okay? And, and we call whatever, however, however that happens, K2. Um, and, you know, this, this could degrade. Uh, you know, you could have some backwards uh, weirdness happening there, but we basically just kind of ignore that for, for this, okay? So, there you go, all right? So, that's that's the basic michaelis Mitten thing. Okay, so what we want to do is we just want to figure out how, how fast, how from it, going from substrate to product, okay? So, my substrates become products, and the enzymes catalyze 
the substrate to product reaction, okay? So, damn, it'd be really nice to know um, how fast this reaction happens. How fast do I go from substrate to product, okay? How, what's going on there? So that's uh, this here, and we start with our derivation, okay? And that's velocity. So how fast this thing happens, that's my velocity. And this is just a basic differential equation, right? Velocity equals dp dt, okay? So d, okay, and look at that as a change, okay? A change in product concentration. And I should just say that anything in a bracket that just means that it's a constant, it's a molar concentration, okay? Moles, millimoles, whatever. All right, so velocity equals dp dt. Hey, cool, that's really simple. Well, yeah, but there's a whole lot um, of, uh, of um, deriving we have to do to kind of get to the, okay? So that ultimately equals... Okay, this constant K2, that makes sense, right? Because ultimately, it's the enzyme substrate complex degrading into the free enzyme and the product. Okay, it's ultimately this thing here that's leading to the creation of the product, right? So that's just whatever this constant is. And again, we just have to experiment to find that constant out. Multiplied by the product of this by the enzyme substrate complex. Well, here's the problem. It's really darn hard to find this. And you, know, you can't really measure this very easily in a lab. You can't really, um, in a test tube or a human being or an organism, you can't really look at this and go, huh, I know the concentration of enzyme substrate complex. It's really damn hard. So what we have to do is we have to do some math, all right? So what do we do is, well, we know... When we talk about enzyme, I have three, basically three types. I have my unbound enzyme. So that's an enzyme that has not been bound with a substrate. Okay, that's right here. All right, I have my enzyme substrate complex. That's my bound enzyme. Hey, it's bound with some sort of substrate. And then I have some total, right? I have my total enzyme, and that's, and that's, at least in a test tube, that's pretty easy to figure out because you know how much enzyme you've added, okay? That's the total amount of enzyme you have, okay? And then you have some amount of that total is unbound and some amount of that total is bound, okay? That's your unbound and that's your bound. So you can figure out um, from your total, you can figure out how much is unbound. Um, I think re reasonably easy. Um, it's just figuring this out. So what you do is you go, okay, well... My enzyme substrate complex divided by the total concentration of enzymes is going to equal the enzyme substrate complex concentration divided by ES plus E. All right. And then what I what I can do is I can pull ES out in front of it, right? I pull my ES and make find out what ES is, all right? And then I just algebraically rearrange this. You know, you can you can go through it if you want and uh, convince yourself that that uh, that hopefully I arranged this algebraically. Okay, that's the um, total concentration enzyme multiplied by the ES, divided by ES plus E. Okay, unbound. Okay, cool. So, um, I do some more math and rearranging and, and crap, and I, and I hey, I figure a really, important, uh, a really important concept comes out, this KM, that's called the Michaelis uh, constant. Okay, and the Michaelis constant is, is nothing more than um, a constant that helps describe this this reaction, and what 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 it, what really what it is it's it's K one okay so whatever this constant is and we just figure that out through experimentation plus this here all right so I have um, the, the the kind of this this forward part here and I divide that by um, or K minus one what the hell am I thinking here well anyway. So K minus one is the, the backward, okay, plus plus K two, okay. So basically, what I, I'm I'm taking, you know, what's causing this reaction to shift this way, okay, to cause degradation, okay. That's the K minus one constant it describes that, plus K two, you know, the constant that ultimately describes the um, degradation of the enzyme substrate complex into the product. Divide that by this one here, my K1. And bam, what do you know? I get some constant, another constant called the Michaelis, uh, uh, I think it's a Michaelis constant, 
Maybe they meant in constant. Hey, whatever. It's the km. All right. Now, in practical terms, the km is actually going to be something known as one half v max. I haven't talked about v max yet, but just kind of throw that into the back of your mind that that, from a real pra practical sense, that's what the hell we're talking about. Okay. And I can go blah, 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 chug, 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 do more algebra, blah, 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 rearrange, rearrange, di differentiate, blah, 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 okay? Um, I could do all those steps, and you can convince yourself, hopefully, if you want to go through all that tediousness, which I don't really have to, um, so there you go, all right? Um, and I eventually arrive at the Michaelis-Minton formula, the velocity of the reaction, right? Because that's originally what we were trying to figure out here. This different, we're solving for this differential equation here. And velocity ultimately equals some concept known as the Vmax. We'll talk about that here in another video. The Vmax multiplied by the substrate concentration um, divided by the, the Michaelis constant um, plus the substrate concentration. And you do you. So uh, I do my experiment, I figure out what the Km with the Vmax, what the substrate concentration, I should know these, okay? I should know what the substrate concentration is because I measure that, right? And I run my, let my experiment run, I can figure out what the Vmax is, okay? And I can figure out what my Km value is because it's half my Vmax, all right? So I find the maximum velocity of, um, the, of this, okay, going on in the lab, all right? And bam, I figure out what the velocity is at any given point, right? And then velocity really is just, this is just a, a function here. You can graph this, right? This is, you know, my velocity is nothing more than y, right? Y equals, um, you know, x plus 1, right? I can graph that. Uh, just as long as I know what x is, you know, if x is 1, then y is 2. If x is 2, y is 3, and so on and so forth. Well, same thing applies here. V becomes my y, my, my dependent variable, and depending on depending on what the V max, the Km, and the substrate is, okay, I plug those in and I chug it, and I get my velocity. And uh, I think I'll go ahead and um, cut this particular video off here. And in the next video will be much. The next video that I'm going to do is going to be a lot more relevant than this one. But this one is just kind of building up all the what are some of the concepts are and blah 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 at the end of the day this is the um, important equation here this is the michaelis minton equation and this is what we can use to um, solve and graph enzyme action using this particular model of enzyme act activity okay guys hopefully you found this somewhat helpful <laughs> and as always thanks for hanging in there